Hi everyone, this is Ruchi Kulkarni and today we are going to do a chapter from Footprints Without Feet. The chapter's name is The Hack Driver, written by Sinclair Lewis. The story, The Hack Driver, is about a man named Oliver Lutkins. He was a cunning man who duped a young lawyer, who is also the narrator of the story, when he came to serve summons on Lutkins. Oliver pretended to be a hack driver and called himself Bill Magnuson. Throughout the course of the story, we come to know that Lutkins impressed the narrator with his helpfulness, liveliness, philosophical attitude and generosity. But it is only at the end the suspense is revealed that the hack driver Bill was Lutkins himself. The narrator felt ashamed of himself for being cheated so easily. Let's read and understand this interesting story written by Harry Sinclair Lewis. We will do the significance of the title, the moral of the story, summary in the written form and question answers. But before we begin with the session, let's know something about its author. Harry Sinclair Lewis was born on 7th February 1885 in Minnesota, US. He was an American writer and playwright. In 1930, he became the first writer of the United States to receive the Nobel Prize in Literature. This was awarded for his vigorous and graphic art of description and his ability to create with wit and humor new types of characters. He is best known for his novels Main Street, Babbitt, Aerosmith, Elmer Gantry, Dodsworth and It Can't Happen Here. He died on 10th January 1951 in Rome, Italy. A young lawyer comes to a village to serve summons on Oliver Lutkins. Summons is an order to appear before a judge. So it is basically a court order. A friendly hack driver takes him around the village in search of Lutkins. Hack driver is a person who drives a horse cart because hack means a horse cart. Does he find him? Who is Lutkins? Let's know the answers to these questions. After graduating with honors, I became a junior assistant clerk in a magnificent law firm. Magnificent means excellent. I was sent not to prepare legal briefs, but to serve summons like a cheap private detective. Legal briefs means written legal documents and summon is a court order. Like a cheap private detective. I had to go to dirty and shadowy corners of the city to seek out my victims. Shadowy means dark and dim places. Some of the larger and more self-confident ones even beat me up. I hated this unpleasant work and the side of the city life it revealed to me. I even considered fleeing to my hometown. Fleeing means running away. Where I could have been a real lawyer right away without going through this unpleasant training period. So I rejoiced one day when they sent me out 40 miles in the country to a town called New Malian to serve summons on a man called Oliver Lutkins. We needed this man as a witness in a law case and he had ignored all our letters. The story starts with the narrator describing about himself. He says that he is a graduate with honours and he became a junior assistant clerk in a very big and famous law firm. But he wasn't preparing the legal documents there. Actually, he was given a job to serve summons, that is to call people to the court, to serve them orders of the court. And this to him seemed like a work of some cheap private detective. He was forced to go to dirty and shadowy places of the city to uh, give summons to his victims. Sometimes he was even beaten up by stronger men. He hated this unpleasant work 
and he even considered of running away to his hometown because in his hometown he could have been a real lawyer straight away and he wouldn't have to go through all this unpleasant training period ever so one day when the narrator got a chance to go out 40 miles in the village called new malian to serve summons on a man whose name was oliver lutkins the narrator was very happy everyone needed this man oliver lutkins because he was a witness in a law case and earlier also oliver was given a lot of summons but he ignored all of those court's letters and he never appeared as a witness now let's see what happens next when i got to new malian my eager expectations of a sweet and simple country village were severely disappointed its streets were rivers of mud with rows of wooden shops either painted a sour brown or bare of any paint at all the only agreeable sight about the place was the delivery man at the station he was about 40 red faced cheerful and thick about the middle thick about the middle means fat around the waist his working clothes were dirty and well worn and he had a friendly manner you felt at least that he liked people i want i told him to find a man named oliver lutkins lutkins i saw him around here about an hour ago hard fellow to catch though always up to something or other he is probably trying to start up a poker game in the back of fritz shop poker is a card game in which bluff is used as players bet on the value of their cards i'll tell you boy is there any hurry about locating lutkins yes i want to catch the afternoon train back to the city i was very important and secret about it i'll tell you what i've got a hack a hack is a horse cart i'll get it out and we can drive around together and find lutkins i know most of the places he hangs out the narrator had expected that this village called new malian would be a very nice countryside or a very sweet and simple country village but he was severely disappointed when he went there the streets were like rivers of mud there were rows of wooden shops and these wooden shops were either painted with very dull brown color or there were there was no paint at all on it the only good sight that he could see was that there was a delivery man at the station this delivery man was about 40 years old he had a red face he was cheerful and he was little fat around his middle portion of the body that is around the waist his working clothes or the clothes that he had worn were very dirty but he was very friendly so the narrator went to up to him and asked him about oliver lutkins that man informed the narrator that lutkins was a hard fellow to catch but he was just around there an hour ago and now he must be at the back of fritz shop because he is planning to open up a poker game so this man offered help to the narrator in locating lutkins the narrator told him that he wanted to catch the afternoon train back to the city and therefore he was in a hurry to locate him the hack driver promised him to take him around the village to find lutkins because he knew all the places where the lutkins can be spotted he was so open and friendly that i glowed with the warmth of his affection i knew of course that he wanted the business but his kindness was real i was glad the fair money would go to this good fellow i managed to bargain down to 2 dollars an hour and then he brought from his house nearby a sort of large black box on wheels he remarked well young man here's the carriage and his white smile made me into an old friend these villagers are so ready to help a stranger he had already made it his own task to find oliver lutkins for me he said 
I don't want to interfere, young fellow, but my guess is that you want to collect some money from Lutkins. He never pays anybody a cent. He still owes me 50 cents on a poker game. I was fool enough to play with him. He's not really bad, but it's hard to make him part with his money. If you try to collect from him in those fancy clothes, he'll be suspicious and get away from you. If you want, I will go into Fritz and ask for him. And you can keep out of sight behind me. The man whom the narrator met was very open and friendly and the narrator was very happy with his affection. He knew that if ever he has to pay to this man, it would only go for his kindness because his kindness was very real. Still, the narrator managed to bargain down to $2 an hour with him. After that, the man brought from his house a big carriage. It was black in color. This carriage was attached to the horse and the cart was ready. The narrator felt that this man, who was ready to help him, has already made it as his own work or as his own responsibility to find Oliver Lutkins for the narrator. The man thought that the narrator was there to collect some money from Lutkins. But Lutkins never pays anybody a cent. Even this man had to recover 50 cents on a poker game in which he was fooled by Lutkins. He also told the narrator that Lutkins was not really bad, but he never pays anyone back. So one idea to collect money from him is that if the narrator goes to meet him in these fancy clothes, he will always run away. Therefore, the man told the narrator that wherever he will go to look for Lutkins, he will go first. The narrator should stay behind him while this man will do all the inquiry. The first place where they thought that they should go was at the Fritz because behind the Fritz shop, Lutkins was supposed to open his poker game. I loved him for this. By myself, I might never have found Lutkins. With the hack driver's knowing hell, I'm sure of getting my man. I took him into confidence and told him that I wanted to serve the summons on Lutkins. That the man had refused to be a witness when his information would have quickly settled our case. The driver listened earnestly. Honestly means attentively or interestingly. At the end, he hit me on the shoulder and laughed. Well, we'll give Brother Lutkins a little surprise. Let's start, driver. Most folks around here call me Bill or Magnuson. My business is called William Magnuson Fancy Carting and Hacking. All right, Bill. Shall we proceed to Fritz? Yes. Lutkins is just as likely to be there as anywhere. Plays a lot of poker. He is good at deceiving people. Deceiving means cheating. Bill seemed to admire Lutkins' talent for dishonesty. I felt that if he had been a policeman, he would have caught Lutkins respectfully and jailed him with regret. Bill led me into Fritz. Have you seen Oliver Lutkins around today? Friend of his looking for him, said Bill cheerily. Cheerily means happily. The narrator loved how the man helped him. By himself, probably the narrator would never have found Lutkins. But with that hack driver's help, he was sure that he will get Lutkins in no time. Then after some time, the narrator shared his secret with the hack driver. He told him, that he was actually a lawyer and he had come there to serve summons on Lutkins. But Lutkins refused to be a witness and that is why the case which was going on in the court was never getting settled. The hack driver listened to the narrator very carefully and at the end he promised the narrator that they will definitely find Lutkins. While they were on their way, the hack driver told his real name. He told that he was Bill. People called him Bill or Magnuson. Moreover, he also said 
that Lutkins was just likely to be at the Fritz place. He is one person who loves to cheat people, who is very good at cheating people. And there is so much of dishonesty in that person. The narrator felt that if the hack driver had been a policeman, then he would have caught Lutkins very respectfully and jailed him. And after that, he would have regretted for jailing him. Because Bill seemed to be a very kind-hearted person. He seemed to admire Lutkin's talent for dishonesty. Bill took the narrator into the Fritz shop. As Bill had told the narrator to be out of sight or behind him and he'll do the inquiry, the same thing happened. Bill went inside the Fritz shop to ask whether he had seen Oliver Lutkins there or not because a friend of him had been looking for him. While the Bill asked this question to Fritz happily, the narrator had been standing behind Bill because Bill had told him that if ever he goes to ask questions to people, then he will never find Oliver. Fritz looked at me, hiding behind Bill. He hesitated and then admitted, yes, he was in here a little while ago. Guess he has gone over to Gustav to get a shave. Well, if he comes in, tell him I am looking for him. We drove to Gustav's barber shop. Again, Bill went in first and I lingered at the door. He asked not only the Swede but two customers if they had seen Lutkins. Swede is the native of Sweden. The Swede had not. He said angrily, I haven't seen him and don't care to. But if you find him, you can just collect that dollar thirty-five he owes me. One of the customers thought he had seen Lutkins walking down Main Street, this side of the hotel. As he climbed back into the hack, Bill concluded that since Lutkins had exhausted his credit at Gustav's, he had probably gone to Gray's for a shave. At Gray's barber shop, we missed Lutkins by only five minutes. He had just left probably for the pool room. At the pool room, it appeared that he had just bought a pack of cigarettes and gone out. So we pursued him. Pursued means followed. Just behind him, but never catching him. For an hour till it was past one o'clock. I was hungry, but I had so enjoyed Bill's rough country opinions about his neighbours that I scarcely cared whether I found Lutkins or not. When Bill and the narrator went to Fritz's shop, obviously the narrator was hiding behind Bill. When Bill asked Fritz about Oliver's whereabouts, he told him that he was there a little while ago and after this he must have gone to Gustav's for a shave. Both Bill and the narrator went to the Gustav's barber shop. Gustav was a Swede. That is, he belonged to Sweden and in his shop, he had two more customers. So when Bill asked him whether he had seen Lutkins or not, Gustav got very angry. He told Bill that he hadn't seen him and moreover, he should collect his $35 which he owed him. But one of the customers in the shop told Bill that he, they had seen him at the side of the hotel. He was walking down the main street and Bill concluded that since Lutkins had exhausted his credit with Gustav's, then he must have gone to Gray's shop for a shave. So they both went to Gray's barber shop, but there again they missed Lutkins by only five minutes. And someone told him that he had just left for the pool room. When Bill and narrator went to the pool room to look for Lutkins, it appeared as if he had just bought a pack of cigarettes and gone out. So there again, they missed Lutkins. But both of them kept following him, just behind Lutkins, but never catching Lutkins. And like that, an hour passed, till it was one o'clock. It was one o'clock and the narrator started to feel hungry. But he was enjoying Bill's country opinions about his neighbours so much that he did not even care whether he will ever be able to catch Lutkins or not. 
How about something to eat? I suggested. Let's go to a restaurant and I'll buy you lunch. Well, I ought to go home to the wife. I don't care much for these restaurants. Only four of them and they are all bad. Tell you what we'll do. We'll get the wife to pack up a lunch for us. She won't charge you more than half a dollar and it would cost you more for a greasy meal in a restaurant. And we'll go up to Waits Hill and enjoy the view while we eat. Greasy meal means oily meal. I know that Bill's helpfulness to the young fellow from the city was not entirely a matter of brotherly love. I was paying him for his time. In the end, I paid him for six hours, including the lunch hour, at what was then a very high price. But he was no more dishonest than I. I charged the whole thing to the firm, but it would have been worth paying him myself to have his presence. His cheerful country wisdom was very refreshing to a country boy like myself who was sick of the city. The narrator was now hungry and he wanted to eat something. Then Bill suggested that they would pack some lunch from his home. His wife would pack the lunch for them and she would cost only half a dollar and they will go to Wade's Hill to enjoy the lunch while they will enjoy the view there. The narrator knew that Bill's helpfulness was not entirely like brotherly love because he was charging for all of it. The narrator had to pay him for six hours, which was including the lunch hour, and that was a very high price. But the narrator was smarter than Bill. He was even dishonest because the narrator charged that whole amount to the firm and he got paid by the firm. The only thing the narrator liked was Bill's presence. He liked Bill's cheerful country wisdom, which was very refreshing, especially to the narrator because he was sick of the city life and he felt very refreshed when he came to that village and he was in the company of Bill. As we sat on the hilltop, looking over the pastures and creek which slipped among the trees, he talked of New Malian and painted a picture in the words of all people in it. Pastures are green grasslands and creek is a small stream. He noticed everything, but no matter how much he might laugh at people, he also understood and forgave their foolishness. He described the minister's wife who sang the loudest in church when she was most in debt. He commented on the boys who came back from college in fancy clothes. He told about the lawyer whose wife could never succeed in getting him to put on both a collar and a tie on the same day. He made them all live. On that day, I came to know New Malian better than I did the city and to love it better. Bill didn't know about colleges and cities, but he had travelled around a lot of the country and had had a lot of jobs. From his adventures, he had brought back a philosophy of simplicity and laughter. He strengthened me. We left that peaceful scene of meadows and woods and resumed our search of Oliver Lutkins. We could not find him. At last, Bill cornered a friend of Lutkins and made him admit what he guessed. Oliver's gone out to his mother's farm, three miles north. We drove out there, laying plans. As the narrator and Bill sat on the hilltop, eating and looking over the natural beauty, they could find small pastures of grass where the cattle could feed. They could find a stream which moved among the trees. Bill talked of New Malian village and he painted a picture in the words of all the people in it. In other words, he explained about people or he described about people who lived in that village. He noticed everything, but he also understood and forgave everyone's foolishness. He described about many people who lived in that village. 
First, he described about a minister's wife who sang the loudest in the church whenever she had too much of debt on her shoulders. Next, he commented on those boys who came back from college in fancy clothes, in bright clothes. He also told about a lawyer whose wife could never make him put on both a collar and a tie on the same day. Bill made all these people live because he described them, he described their lives to the narrator. And on that day, the narrator understood or he came to know New Malian much better than the city where he lived. And he started to love New Malian a lot. Bill had never gone to colleges or cities, but he had traveled a lot around the country or around the village and he had changed a lot of jobs. Bill had a lot of experience from his adventures. His philosophy of simplicity and laughter gave strength to the narrator. After eating lunch, Bill and the narrator left that peaceful scene. Bill then cornered one of Lutkin's friend and asked him where he could find Lutkin's. His friend told Bill that he could find Oliver at his mother's farm which was three miles north. And now both narrator and Bill set out to Lutkin's farm, making plans on their way. I know Oliver's mother. She is a terror. Bill sighed. I took a trunk out there for her once and she almost took my skin off because I didn't treat it like a box of eggs. She is about 9 feet tall and 4 feet thick and quick as a cat and she sure can talk. I'll bet Oliver heard that somebody is chasing him and he has gone on there to hide behind his mother's skirts. Well, we'll try her. You'd better let me do it, boy. You may be great at literature and law, but you haven't had real training in swearing. We drove into a poor farmyard. We were faced by an enormous and cheerful old woman. My guide bravely went up to her and said, Remember me? I am Bill Magnuson, the carter and hackman. I want to find your son, Oliver. I don't know anything about Oliver and I don't want to, she shouted. Now, look here. We've had just about enough nonsense. This young man represents the court in the city and we have a legal right to search all properties for this Oliver Lutkins. Bill made me sound very important. And the woman was impressed. She retired into the kitchen and we followed. She seized an iron from the old-fashioned stuff and marched on us, shouting, You search all you want to, if you don't mind getting burnt first. She shouted and laughed at our frightened retreat. Retreat means stepping back. Bill told the narrator that he knew Oliver's mother. And he told him that she is very strict. She is about 9 feet tall and 4 feet thick. But she is very quick in her actions like a cat. Once upon a time, Bill had helped her in taking out a trunk. But she got very angry on Bill because he did not treat that box properly. He was not delicately handling it. And that is why she beat him up. Since then, Bill did not like Oliver's mother. But he told the narrator that Oliver must be hiding in mother's house and so he suggested that they both should go there to look for Oliver. And he also told the narrator that the narrator should stay back while he will go and ask. So they both drove into a poor farmyard. They were faced by it by a big and cheerful old woman and this old woman was Oliver's mother. When Bill asked her about her son Oliver, she shouted. She became angry and she said that she did not know anything about Oliver. After that, Bill introduced narrator to that woman and he told her that uh, the narrator had all the legal rights to search all properties to find Oliver there. The narrator thought that Bill had made him a very important person in that woman's eye. The woman also became very impressed. But soon she went into the kitchen 
and she got an iron from the old fashioned stuff and she went marching behind both of them just in order to shoo them away from the house she shouted and both of them ran away from there let's get out of here she'll murder us bill whispered outside he said did you see her smile she was laughing at us i agreed that it was pretty disrespectful treatment we did however search the house since it was only one story high bill went round it peering in at all the windows peering means looking in we examined the barn and stable we were reasonably certain that lutkins was not there it was nearly time for me to catch the afternoon train and bill drove me to the station On the way to the city I worried very little over my failure to find Lutkins I was too busy thinking about Bill Magnuson Really I considered returning to New Mullion to practice law If I had found Bill so deep and richly human might I not grow to love Fritz and Gustav and a hundred other slow spoken simple wise neighbors I pictured an honest and happy life beyond the strict limits of universities and law firms i was excited i had found a treasure i had discovered a new way of life but if i did not speak much about lutkins the office did i found them all upset next morning the case was coming up in the court and they had to have lutkins i was a shameful useless fool On seeing Oliver's mother's behavior Bill and the narrator thought that they should go out of there because then she will murder them and she did smile and laughed at them well the narrator also agreed that it was a very disrespectful treatment that was given to them but they did not go away without searching the house so Bill went round the house he looked inside all the windows He also checked the barn and the stable where the animals were kept. Lutkins was not there. By now it was nearly time for the narrator to catch the afternoon train, so Bill took him to the station. On the way to the city, the narrator did not worry much about not finding Lutkins, but he was very happy thinking about Bill Magnuson. He was impressed by that village named New Mullion. and he was also impressed by the people like fritz gustav and all other neighbors who were very wise and simple so not just bill but the entire village and its people had impressed the narrator very much the narrator pictured an honest and happy life which was not limited to universities or law firms of the cities he was very excited because he thought that he had found a real treasure or he had discovered a new way of living life after visiting new mullion although the narrator did not think much about lutkins but his office people did they were all upset with him because he could not get hold of lutkins the next morning there was a case which was coming up in the court and lutkins had to be present but the narrator felt very shameful and useless because he could not do his job well that morning my promising legal career almost came to an end before it had begun the chief almost murdered me he hinted that i might do well at digging ditches i was ordered back to new mullion and with me went a man who had worked with lutkins i was rather sorry because it would prevent my loafing all over again with bill loafing means spending time idle way doing nothing when the train arrived at new mullion bill was on the station platform near his cart strangely enough that old tigress lutkin's mother was there talking and laughing with bill not quarreling at all from the train steps i pointed bill out to my companion and said There's a fine fellow a real man I spent the day with him He helped you hunt for Oliver Lutkins Yes he helped me a lot He must have He is Lutkins himself
What really hurt me was that when I served the summons, Lutkins and his mother laughed at me as though I were a bright boy or seven. With loving kindness, they begged me to go with them to a neighbor's house for a cup of coffee. I told them about you, and they are anxious to look at you, said Lutkins joyfully. They are about the only folks in the town that missed seeing you yesterday. So when the narrator reached his office, he was almost looked down upon because he could not do his job well. His chief was very angry with him and he even told the narrator that he was better at digging ditches rather than doing any legal procedure. So the chief of the narrator told him to go back to New Malian with another person who knew Lutkins. The narrator did not like this because this time he wouldn't be able to spend more time with Bill. The train arrived at New Malian and Bill was standing there at the station near his cart. He was standing there with Lutkin's mother. They both were talking and laughing but this time strangely they weren't quarrelling with each other. The narrator pointed out towards Bill and told to his companion that this was the real man or fine fellow and he had spent his entire day with him. When the narrator's friend asked him whether he helped him to find Oliver Lutkins, at that time the narrator replied that he did. He did help him a lot. After this, whatever the narrator's friend replied comes as a real surprise. The friend says that this man, that is Bill, himself was Lutkins. The narrator was shocked. He didn't know what to do. But finally, when they both went towards them to serve the summons, Lutkin's mother and Lutkin's, both of them, laughed at the narrator. That was very disrespectful for the narrator. And very kindly, they requested the narrator and his friend to have a cup of coffee with one of their neighbours because it was only their neighbours who hadn't seen him the other day, while everyone else in the village had seen him. Therefore, the end of the story suggests that the narrator was very easily cheated or duped by this Lutkins. Lutkins posed himself as a hack driver and that's what he did for living in that village. So we can say that Lutkins had a good presence of mind. This is a humorous story in which the suspense is revealed at the end. The narrator comes to village New Malian as a lawyer to serve summons on Oliver Lutkins. The narrator meets a hack driver who puts a good impression on him. In the whole story, the narrator explains how friendly, generous and philosophical the hack driver is. The narrator also tells how the hack driver goes out of his way to help him find Lutkins. But only at the end he understands that he has been thoroughly cheated by the hack driver because he was Lutkins himself. Since the whole story revolves around the nature and behavior of the hack driver, the title of the story is justified. The lesson talks about a lawyer who was duped. He should have been careful and haven't taken his work for granted. Cautious moves could have saved the lawyer time and money. Thus we understand from the story that even a learned person can be cheated if he becomes careless or dependent. Therefore, it is advisable not to trust a stranger with an important work. We must be careful of our actions and decisions. Coming up next are the summary and question answers. That's all in this session. If you love to study with me, please subscribe to my channel and do not forget to press the bell icon for getting instant notifications of my latest uploads. I'll see you soon in my next video of another chapter of class 10th. Thank you and God bless you.